If you're just getting started with acrylic painting or you'd like to learn more about it, this video is for you. I've been painting for over 15 years and I'll share the top supplies that I recommend for any beginner. By the end of the video, you'll feel equipped to take on your very first painting project. Let's get into it. The first thing you need to get started with acrylic painting is, of course, acrylic paints. There are tons of brands and it can get pretty expensive depending on how premium you go. You can categorize these paints into two main categories, students grades paint and artist grades paint. Students grades paints are less pigmented, so this means that when you apply them, they're less saturated, they're less rich, and also because of this you often have to apply more layers to get the same level of saturation. They're also low cost, which makes it a great option if you're on a budget and they're overall great for beginners because as you're getting started with acrylic paints you want to learn about how it works and you might not want to invest all your money into artist grades paint without really knowing what you're doing yet. Overall students grades paint kind of just gets the job done. Artist grades paints also known as premium paints offer the benefits of being more pigmented so they're a lot more saturated a lot more bright and you apply less layers because they're more rich and saturated and concentrated in their pigment. They are also higher cost so they can be a lot more expensive than students grades paint depending on how high on the scale you go and overall they're great for intermediate to professional artists because of these benefits especially when you start selling your art you want the paint to be as long lasting as possible to prevent yellowing cracking and overall a higher quality of outcome of your painting some of my favorite brands of student grades paint are Artessa, Craftsmart, as well as Liquitex. Liquitex is especially one of my favorites because it's a bit more on the higher end of student grades paint. It's great quality and it's also very affordable. If you look behind me here, I have a bunch of Liquitex basics um, because they are affordable and I love to use them throughout various projects. Some great artist grade paints that I recommend are Golden Heavy Body Acrylic as well as M Grand Acrylic Paints. Those are a couple of my favorites, but you really can't go wrong with any premium paint because they're all going to be far better quality than the student grades paint. If you have a bit more experience with acrylic painting or you just want any of the benefits that I mentioned before, then definitely go with the artist grade paint. Or you can follow my personal painting hack which is to purchase artist grades paints for colors that need to be more pigmented and students grades paints for colors that are a bit more earthy and don't need to be as saturated. However, there's one type of mistake that a lot of beginner painters make that you'll want to avoid, especially if you're buying premium paint, which is don't buy all the colors of the wheel. You'll save money and improve your color mixing skills by limiting the amount of colors you buy. You can even just buy the very minimum of colors, the primary colors. Primary colors are red, blue, and yellow. And if you haven't heard of them yet, they're the main core colors that you can use to create all the other colors in the spectrum. You can buy more than these colors if you don't feel comfortable mixing yet, but keep in mind that you really just need those colors as well as black and white to just change the darkness and the lightness of the color. To use your paints, you'll need brushes. Like acrylic paints there are lower tier brushes as well as more top tier brushes but I'll let you in on a secret I haven't used too many premium brushes in my life I personally have a track record of being a little bit of a messy painter and it hurts to spend $20 on a single brush and then to see yourself have to throw it away shortly after so personally I have been buying premium brushes as I have slowly proven to myself that I can take care of them well if you have the budget for it definitely purchase premium brushes and take good care of them so you can keep them for a very long time. If you'd like some low-cost brushes, you can check out brands like Artist Loft or Artist Smith. Those will usually be about $10 to $15 for a good set of brushes, but keep in mind that these often have bristles that fall out and these can get stuck in your painting. A great in-between between lower cost brushes and higher cost brushes are these Princeton Select assorted brushes. They're a bit more higher quality than the brands that I mentioned previously while also not being so expensive that they'll break the bank. Regardless of what tier of brush you get, you want to make sure of two things. One, that the brushes are synthetic. Synthetic is a type of material that will be resistant to the harsh chemicals found in acrylic paint. You can usually tell if a brush is synthetic because it will say somewhere on the packaging or on the label. Secondly, you'll want to make sure to avoid natural hair brushes. Natural hair brushes have finer bristles. They work great with paints like watercolors, but unfortunately they won't work well with acrylic paints. 
Another key question that comes up with brushes is what style of brush do I get? You don't need all the brushes that exist out there. You can get started and create almost anything with these core five. A detailed round brush, a round brush, a flat brush, a bright brush, and a filbert brush. Most brush packs come with all of these included, and with these key five, you'll have the perfect brush toolkit to create all of your paintings moving forward. Palette knives are useful when mixing colors before applying them to your painting. You can definitely mix colors with your brush, and I'm guilty of doing this at times myself, but it's good to get in the practice of using palette knives. If you don't always use them, you can sometimes run the risk of muddying up your colors or even smearing unmixed colors on your painting. Palette knives often come in plastic as well as steel form, and you really can't go wrong with either. It just depends on your personal preference and budget. Acrylic paints break down with water, so you'll need water in your preferred container to be able to use your paints. Water Water with acrylic painting helps you clean your brush after you're done switching from one color to another. They also help you mix colors together and also make your paint a lot more manageable to apply to the canvas since some types of acrylic paint can be very thick. While you're working on your painting, you'll need something to dry your brush on. This is done when you're switching between colors or also when you dip your paintbrush into water to get your paint a bit more moist. You can use paper towels as well as a rag that you don't care about staining or getting dirty. Rags are a bit more economically as well as environmentally friendly because you can wash them and reuse them time after time. You'll need some type of platform to put your paint on. You can use a traditional artist palette. These often come in glass or wood form, but you'll want to stick to plastic. Wood can often absorb too much of the acrylic paint and your acrylic paint can really stain the wooden board. Palettes are great because they look really stylish and you can feel super legit when you're using them, but they're definitely not necessary. For the majority of my art career, as well as now, I often just use random plastic surfaces. As long as it's plastic and flat, you're good to go. You'll need something to create your masterpiece on. You can get a frame canvas, which come in various sizes and shapes, or you can get canvas paper. The one thing you'll want to look out for when you're purchasing the canvas is whether or not they're gessoed. Gesso is pretty much like a primer. If you've ever applied primer before painting the walls inside your house or primer before putting on your makeup, it works in a really similar way. Gesso sets a smooth base for your paint to go over and can also help your paint last longer. Some canvases already come with gesso on them, so you can either purchase a pre-gessoed canvas or you can buy gesso separately and then apply a few layers before you start painting. As a beginner, I created a ton of paintings without gesso on them simply because I didn't know it was a thing. So it's definitely not necessary to create a painting. You can definitely create an acrylic painting without gesso, but it really helps optimize your process and is definitely something you want to do for paintings that you plan to sell or a painting that you want to last for a long time. Sealer is a way to lock in your finished painting. It helps prevent cracking, yellowing, as well as makes it more resistant to water and humidity. It's definitely a must to seal in your painting, especially after you spent so much time creating it. Sealers come in spray and gloss form. The type you choose entirely depends on your preference on whether you'd like to spray it over your canvas or apply a glue-like layer over the top of your painting. I personally like to use spray, and if you choose to use spray, it's a great choice, just make sure that you don't spray too close to your canvas because then you run the risk of smudging your painting or applying too much varnish in one area, which can make your painting look splotchy and is something that unfortunately I've done a couple times. These are the core materials to get you started with acrylic painting, but the learning does not stop here. If you're interested in learning more about acrylic painting and best practices, be sure to subscribe for more videos like this. And if you're just getting started with your art journey, and want some inspiration while you're building your art studio, be sure to watch my video where I transform my desk into a dream art workspace. I'll see you next time and thanks for watching.